Good morning, good morning. Once again, it's time for the Sunday School Hour here at Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. We just want you to know that it starts at 9 a.m. to 9.45. Everybody's welcome here in the sanctuary. So if you desire to come out, you still have time. We want you to know our studies in the Holy Spirit. We pray that those who are at home are, that are listening in, and we pray that one day that we will all be together in the church studying our lesson. Uh, Reverend McGee is, is away on vacation this uh, week, so keep him in prayer and his family, amen. And we know it's good to spend family time with your family, amen. So let us, let us open up in prayer this morning. Uh, let's bow our heads once again. We start at 9 a.m. and you are welcome to come out and be part of this uh, in person. We are, we, you know, the state is open up. God has blessed us for the church is to open up. So let's bow our heads. Dear Father, come in the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you for this time of uh, education, Christian education. Father, thank you for this Sunday school. We thank you for the lesson we learned with the Holy Spirit, Father. Father, we pray for those who are on their way here. We pray those who are here. And we pray for those out there on our Facebook uh, live situation, Father. Once again, we just thank you and praise for all that you're doing in each life. We pray for our sick and shut in. And we pray, Father, as we come together as a church again, that we all come together to celebrate and, and, give, and give praise and joy to the one and only Jesus Christ who saved all of us. So thank you. We honor you. This we ask our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning we may have what you may think it sounds like a review because we'll be talking about the Holy Spirit. And our overall title of our lesson this uh, morning continues to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And part of this may sound like a view because I, I want to make it very clear, and we're going to get into our lesson, that we as Baptists believe in the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we start the lesson, I let you know that we seem to put more emphasis on the Father and the Son, but the Holy Spirit we seem to understand less and less because we don't spend much time on that. So we're going to get into our lesson, and if you have our outline, it says, filled with the Holy Spirit, and the title of the lesson says, Ephesians 5, 18. And this is what it says, Ephesians 5, 18. And be not drunk with wine, wear in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. This, Paul is writing this letter, and he's writing it to the church. It says, it says to the church in general, not to a particular person, saying how the church should Perceive what the church should be doing when uh, conducting services. And he says right there, if you read it once again, be not drunk of wine, wear in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And Paul is letting them know that during the time that you must understand during these times that wine was drank in the house just like water because the water was so bad, but the drinking of wine was an acceptable uh, thing. But the thing was, it was nasty for a minute. And the thing was, we were not to drink it in excess. In other words, we were, we were to just let it, let it be, let it, let it, let it just as used for uh, medicinal or recreational purpose, but not to do it in excess. The excess means that when you let the wine take complete control of your life. Now, all of us haven't been saved. You know what happens when we have too much of any kind of alcoholic beverages. We tend to lose control. We take access, and it takes control of us. We, we, there's people that we have witnesses that have had whole lives taken over by the consumption of uh, alcohol beverages. And it says in excess. But it says be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you see, if you let the wine take control of you, then what's the problem? You need to change that up and have the Holy Spirit. But when you have the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit take control of you. This is, this is what we're saying. And in, in our outline says, what is the meaning and conditions of being filled with the Holy Spirit? In other words, you, you have to be ready to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Just like ladies and men who ever work in the kitchen, if you're going to fill something up, you make sure that it's ready to be filled up. 
If it's dirty, you clean it up, you wash it, you do you do multiple things to it to be ready to be filled up. And if it has something in it prior to what you had, you get all that all that residue, all that's left over from the prior filling and remove it so it can be filled with something new. And that's something else we'll get into later. But the filling of the Holy Spirit is the source of all virtual spiritual experience in life. Listen. The feeling of the Holy Spirit is the source. The source means the supply, where it comes from. All virtual spiritual experience in life. In other words, all your spiritual experiences, everything you're doing in life is from the Holy Spirit. That, that's, that, that's the source. And we'll get to later. That's the source. That's the beginning of your life changes through the Holy Spirit. Every day can be a day of victory through the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we sometimes we get up in the morning. Sometimes we, we have a problem with victory on our daily basis. But sometimes we get up in the morning, we, we, we some something from last night is still holding on to us, and we we just say, Oh, what's gonna happen today? We get in one of those moves, but some of us just don't even want to get out of the bed. I don't want to go to work because they're getting on my last nerves. I, the, the children they get too demanding or things of that nature. But it says every day can be a day of victory. You can have victory every day, but it puts a condition on it. Our outline says, through the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you can have a victory on a daily basis, but you can't have it alone. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit can you have this victory. What does that mean? It means whatever's coming your way, whatever is giving you that repeated attitude, Whatever is, is trying to steal the victory that you're supposed to have that day, the only thing you can overpower it through is, is the way you overpower through the power of the Holy Spirit. I remember this to one of the bishops, I forgot the denomination, but he stood up and said that we, we're here, we're here, that they was having a conference and they were talking about uh, just the Holy Spirit. And he said, we, we want the Holy Spirit to enter here. He said, one thing you need to do, he said, don't sit by somebody who's defeated. In other words, don't, don't sit by somebody who's already defeated. Because that's a hard thing to do. It's hard to get victory out of somebody who's already accepted defeat. And so, the Holy Spirit will give us that victory. Whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, it is the Holy Spirit through His, his power. Yes, I said His power. I'm going to tell you later on can help you with that victory. I know that we're all humans, as I just stated earlier, we all get up in the morning, I'm not, I'm see, even Reverend Norman feel like, I just want to just go turn over, go right back to sleep. I'm tired of that. I don't know what this day, yesterday was bad, it had some situations come up. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, he says you can have victory on a daily basis. All right. It says here now, when you receive Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit is coming to live in you. When that's one of the first gifts you receive when you were converted. The first gift that you receive when you give your life to Christ, is, you know, is the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And I like the part that says, when you accept Christ, but not just the name, but as your what? Your Savior. You gotta accept him as your savior. And when you do that, a savior means, if you go to the root the word, is saved. That you let you give, you let Christ have the he's, he's taking over your life, he's changing you. He is your savior. You, that statement means he has saved you. And the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. The Holy Spirit makes it possible for every Christian to live a fulfilled, joyful life. It is nothing that you've done. It's nothing that, that, that you said. It's you accepting Jesus, your Savior. Then the Holy Spirit enters into you because you have the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit makes it possible for every Christian to live a fulfilled, joyful life. No matter what your age is, what your ethnicity is, if you just let the Holy Spirit into your life, he will make a change. The Spirit makes it possible for every Christian to live a fulfilled, not just a fulfilled life, but a joyful life. You know, we talk about a joyful life. It does not mean you're going to have times of uh, 
no sorrow or things like that. But your joyful life comes from the fact that no matter what your situation is, no matter what you're going through, there's going to be some joy come out of it because you have the Holy Spirit in you letting you know that this time of sorrow, this time of, 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 of things that's going wrong is not going to last. The Holy Spirit in you says, this too shall pass. And this is what the Holy Spirit does to us. We, we have that joyful life because we know whatever we're going through, whatever situation happened in life, it is not going to last. That's what's different between us and unsaved people. They don't have nobody inside them. They don't have the Holy Spirit telling them this is going to pass. They just think it's going on and on and on and on. But we who have the Holy Spirit within us, the Holy Spirit is telling us that whatever the situation is that's adverse to you, you don't, don't dwell on it because the Holy Spirit is telling you that you're going to have what you're talking about, victory. You're going to have victory no matter what it is, no matter what the battle is. Some of us battle addiction. Some of us battle bad relationships. Uh, we, we battle people talking about us. But God says that no matter what the battle is, you are going to have the victory. Amen. You're going to have the victory. So let us let's talk about the facts about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. And it says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, the Lord is that spirit. What do you, we have to understand something. We tend to forget that the Holy Spirit is, we're going to go to the next, is God. The Holy Trinity, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And there are one. Jesus, when he walked up, said, when you see, see me, you see the Father. In other words, we see the Father, and they all work together as one. They all the, the, the divine deity. They, that's what it's all about. We have to get over the fact sometimes we treat the Holy Spirit like it's some stepchild of the Trinity. But the Holy Spirit is just as equal with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is God. Remember that. The Holy Spirit is not some messenger like an angel. It's not it's not some vision or, or something. The Holy Spirit is God and he dwells within us. Then we go to this. This is one thing we tend to forget. The Holy Spirit is a person. What does that mean? It, it, the Holy Spirit is not an it. Sometimes we slip and we talk about it, but the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's, it is a person. Revelation 2 7. Hear what the Spirit said. So, in other words, in Revelation, let it know the Holy Spirit speaks, the Holy Spirit communicates. So it is, it is a, a divine person. I think our problem is that when we look at the other two parts of the Holy Trinity, we know we know what a father is, okay? We think of the father, we think of uh, each other. That is familiar to us in our witnessing the father. Then we know what a son is, because some of us have children, we have sons, and we know what a son represents. But when it gets to the Holy Spirit, See, we can't relate to that because there's nothing we can we can uh, uh, we can we can judge the Holy Spirit by. We know what a father is. We know what a son is. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we have no other other person or anything to say. Well, this is what the Holy Spirit is. But we must be aware just that He is still a person. And we did sometimes when we hear people praying and the Holy Spirit, it consumed me. No, the Holy Spirit, it did not consume you. The Holy Spirit, it did not influence you. The Holy Spirit, he consumed you. The Holy Spirit, he influenced you. The Holy Spirit, he guides you. And that's what the Holy Spirit, he is a person. He is not a it, he's not a something or any other nickname you want to give him. He is the Holy Spirit. And we have to stop slipping and saying it because he is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anybody have any questions that's here? All right. All right, number three. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to live the Christian life. We have to understand this Christian life, you know, we sometimes say it's, it's going to be all right, it's going to be easy. But this Christian life can be difficult sometimes. Because we, we sometimes, you know, it's strange how in the world we, we, we get to a certain point in life. If you, you know, 
it's strange how the thing, worldly things we do in life, we always seem to have somebody uh, around to help us through it, some, some person. When you're an alcoholic, you've got some other drinking friends or pastor that help you keep that going. Or if you are an adultery or something like that, you've got other people that tell, oh man, you, you, you've got it going on. Someone's always there to prod you on do something. But when you do this Christian life, the same people that used to be with you sometimes will be the same people that says, you're not going to make it. That life's too tough for you. I know who you are. But the Holy Spirit gives us the power in those situations we spoke earlier that when others come in us, that the Holy Spirit gives us the power to resist those who used to have influence over us, if I can say it that way. A lot of times we have people in our life who have influence over us through the relationship that we have with them. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, and sometimes, you know, and friends, they all have some kind of influence because we let them have influence. And, and sometimes the influence is not in a good mode. Sometimes influence is to do things that's going against the new Christian walk that we have. How, how many times we, there's people have been saved and 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 no and and, and no one seems to be there to support you in your new walk because those you had influence of before are still trying to influence you the wrong way. But you don't have to worry about that because the Holy Spirit gives you the power to, re to resist those who, who try to uh, influence you in a negative sense. And so those people who you used to count on to help you to do through is no longer around. The Holy Spirit gives you the power to walk this Christian walk. And sometimes you don't know. I have, a, I have some friends in my old church back in San Francisco. They go on, one of us going to greet the Lord. But their daughter came to the church and she was saved. And she started talking to her parents. The next thing you know, they were party animals, the wife and the, and the husband and all that. And she started talking to them and talking to them. And the next thing they joined the church, turned it out complete around. No drinking, no party, nothing. They gave their whole life to the church. That was the power of the Holy Spirit working through that daughter to influence those parents because she didn't want her parents not to enjoy what she was enjoying, that new life. So the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live this Christian life. But what Reverend Norman, what I want to talk to you about is what I'm trying to get on to you. When people leave you, when people don't want to be around you uh, because you've been starting this Christian walk, sometimes you're going to feel alone. But remember, you're not alone. The Holy Spirit that's in you will help you through those times. Amen? All right. Galatians 5, 22 and 20. But the fruit of the Spirit, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. When we talk, let's, let's look at the verse. When we talk about fruit, fruit is something we live in an agricultural place here in Fresno. I'm from San Francisco. I was in the city. I didn't see too many fruit trees because I came to Fresno. The time I looked around the past, I saw a tree growing something or something growing on the ground. And we, you know, we, we, I, I've never seen so many things going on. Now I got fruit trees in my backyard, but the fruit is what the tree bears. The fruit is what is produced after the tree matures, after the tree takes the soil, to get the, the soil and the sunlight and mix them together and to produce this fruit. And so the fruit is what the tree bears after processing how all the other things that God, it takes nutrients from the soil, it takes the sunlight and changes all this. And, and into the fruit. If you got a peach tree, you're gonna get peaches, apricots, you get apricots, you know. So that's what the that's what the tree produces. And it says the, the fruit of the spirit, what the spirit produces after it does its work. And that's what you gotta say. A tree does not, a tree does not produce anything without doing something. It it grows, it matures, it, like I just said, it takes the nutrients and all that. And there is a parable, perhaps you may have to help me in the Bible, where uh, one man, he had an orchard and one tree, I think of the fig tree, was not bearing any fruit. He said, let's cut that tree down. It's not doing it. 
And the man over the garden says, no, no, let me work with it for a while. Let me dig around and let me fertilize it. And so the man began to work with the tree and fertilize it and, and give it extra water. And because of that, the tree bore fruit. What is that saying? That's your, the, the, the parable is that we as trees in God's vineyard, sometimes we need a little extra care. Sometimes we need to have a little more attention. But we too can bear fruit. We may not bear fruit as some of the other trees in the orchard, but we still will bear some fruit. But the fruit we're going to bear is love. And we know what love is. In the Greek word, it has six different words for love. But we're talking about an agape love. But if you really want the truth, if we want to go uh, what I would call the Jesus love, which is unconditional love. In other words, you love somebody no matter what. Two times we'll love folks, but the only if they love us back. If they don't like us, we ain't going to like them. But unconditional is love is a love that where you, you love someone on the term that I'm not looking for to be loved back, but I'm going to love you anyway. All right? To me, it was sad. I love you only if I can get something from you. I love you as long as you don't cross me. I love you as long as you do what I say. That's not unconditional love. Unconditional love is loving somebody without any baggage, without having to tell them, oh, okay, I love you. I love you so much, but do you love me? It's no, it makes no difference if they love you or not. Unconditional love means that you will love them no matter what. All right? The closest thing I can get to that kind of love is a mother's love, a love for their children. No matter what that child does or what it gets upset, a mother loves that child. Amen? That that's a, there's something to do with the connection of carrying that child within you that gets that connection to you that you can never forget. No matter how old we get uh, as children, the mother will always be there. I used to get upset every time I see these athletes on TV and stuff. They always say, tell my mother hi. I'm going to do this for my mother. I'm like, hey, what happened to dad? There's a dad somewhere around here. Amen. But we need to show some, some love. You know, Reverend Norman, that, yeah. that uh, agape love, that's the love that God showed us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be so challenging to the believer, even mature believer. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where the work of the Holy Spirit comes in. I think that's where prayer, Lord, help me to love the way you want me to love, mm -hmm. to care the way you want me to care. And this pastor stated that, that we have different kinds of, my favorite, one of my favorite verses is that while we were yet sinners, yes. while we were yet sinners, and pastor just put it, and if you really want what pastor say, you put it in that one verse, while we were yet sinners, pastor talk about he sent his son. In other words, we didn't deserve it. We, 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 but he didn't wait for us to change. Unconditional love. He said, I'm going to send my son anyway on the chance that they will change their ways. And that's what the Lord does for us while we were yet sinners. Another fruit is joy. Joy is this. We, we can have a joy that's not predicated on what's going around us. Sometimes we have little children, or I have my children, so they, go, uh, they go to a birthday party, sister. Uh, and, and then they would be joy, just seeing the cake, the balloons, and all, they had joy. But they were predicated to all the things that was going on around them. But the joy we're talking about, the, the, fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, the joy we're talking about is an inner joy. That even in our adverse conditions, we still can have joy. There's an old song, you say, I still have joy. And still have joy. And so today I know you should be in the choir and say, they should sing that song. We still have joy. All the things. And all the things. Through. We still have joy. In other words, I talked to you earlier about what we go through, situations, but we still can have joy because the Holy Spirit is letting us know this will not last. The adverse situation will not, will still have joy. In other words, I don't, wait, I don't need to wait for balloons to go off or rockets and stuff. See, that's what's wrong with some of us. We pray and we think because no, no rockets are going off, cannons shooting off or anything like that, or the day like the 4th of July, fireworks are going off. We, we don't think we have, we, we don't have that joy. But you have that inner joy that's inside of you, knowing that whatever you go through, whatever happens, you will have some joy. 
God will turn it around for you. That's the joy we're speaking of. Reverend, yes, sir. You were speaking of earlier today. The joy that you're speaking of can only come through a stronger and growing relationship with Almighty God, standing in His Word, mm -hmm. praying, and then uh, then we realize that the song say, "This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away." Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I heard a preacher say one time that, and, it, and I found it to be true. There are joy suckers, and then there are joy givers. There are people who just come and suck all the joy out of you. Then there are people who come and just bring all the joy to encourage you. Mm -hmm. So we just have to stay in the Word, stay prayed up, and this joy, this uh, uh, abundant joy, comes through as that. And that's a gift of the Spirit, as mm -hmm. you're saying. The Holy Spirit gives us that gift to have joy despite the circumstances. Yes, as Pat said, that, that joy that we have, you know, the Holy Spirit, as told earlier, will help you keep that joy all right and he said there are folks out there that will suck the joy rock out of you amen and then one time i was teaching about i said those are the kind of folks that you know they're going to suck the joy out of you, but why do you keep sitting next to them <laughs> but i told them that next sunday i don't want everybody moving from one side of the church to the other amen but we have to be around those who are going to help us keep that joy and the holy spirit is going to help you in that Holy Spirit will let you know, no, you don't need to be here right now. You need to cool this relationship for a while. Then there's peace. God gives us peace. There are two kinds of peace in the Bible. The peace with God. And the peace with God is when we accept Jesus as our personal Savior. And that, that, that anger, that gap between him and his creation is, is bridged by Jesus Christ. That's peace with God. Then you speak of peace of God. And the peace of God is knowing that you are saved, as we just earlier, that no matter what your situation, the peace of God will let you know that this is only temporary. That whatever you're going through, it will help you through. Instead of getting crazy and worrying yourself to death, remember the peace of God, that you are a saved saint of God. And because you are a saved saint of God, through the Holy Spirit, he will give you peace in your mind, in your heart. He will give you peace. You know, storms rising all around you. But just as Jesus stepped up and won't say, peace be still, the storm in your life, he will step peace, and the storm will be still. He didn't say the storm won't come now. Amen. He said peace, and peace will be given unto you. Long-suffering. Some say long suffering. I got to suffer long. It doesn't mean you're going to suffer. It says long suffering. But it's trying to tell you that through all, as we talk about adverse situation, you will be able to withstand long suffering. That you, you're not going to fly off the handle and give up and say, I'm through with this. I, I can't handle this anymore. The Holy Spirit is telling you, hang on. Hang on. Because it's not, it's, it's not going to last forever. Just hang on. On, hang in there. Then kindness. Kindness is showing, that's when you show kindness to others. No matter what their situation is, no matter what they're going through, you're still showing kindness. As Christians and with the Holy Spirit working with us, we should be showing kindness to one another. What does that mean? It means that instead of knocking someone down, you lifting them up and started talking about somebody and you're praising them and, and, and instead of staying offish from somebody you're hugging them that's what kindness is all about it's showing somebody that you care and instead of the Holy Spirit will say instead of going and talking about that person and joining in the, the whatever the gossip circle is about that person you go on there and say let's just stop this and pray for them that's the kindness comes in. That's when you've been using that Christian walk, that 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 Holy Spirit within you is telling you that sister, that brother doesn't need a hateful word. They need a peaceful word. They need a kind word. They don't need you talking about them. They need you to hug them. That's what kindness is about. Goodness, goodness. That's that's when you want to do good. Instead of looking for evil to do things wrong, 
we probably God the through through is goodness that people look at you and see that, that, that kindness that you gave God look at you and say, no, oh, that's a good woman, that's a good brother. He's always got something good to say. I always say my mother-in-law who's gone to be with the Lord and I was one of the sweetest one I ever knew. She can find good in anybody. And, and she was she it was she was a good person. She never had a I swear she never had a bad word to say about anybody. She just no matter what they did or how they lived, I think I told the story about study. There was a man who came to church, she fed him and all that, and, and he didn't think he was gonna make it. He left his wife and kids. And then after she passed away, he come knocking on the door. My father opened up as a Caucasian man, and he said, I just come to see her. And then my father told me she passed. And he said, Well, because of her, I made it. Because of the kindness and the goodness that she showed me. And this was a man other folks were stepping over and he didn't want nothing to do. There's people even in the church will step over church, come in the church. In my old church, we had an AA program, addiction program. And I'm just going to be honest with you. They wouldn't pay anything, but it wasn't a burden. They had they meet the same time as choir rehearsal. But some of the deacons said, well, we should just get rid of them. They're not paying the church. Now they're just a nuisance. But they needed a place to meet. And it, the kindness that they showed that So out of that group, some of the people end up in the church. So we have to show kindness. Amen. Any questions, anything? All right. Our next part. Gentleness. Self-control. Gentleness. What is gentleness? Gentleness is, is soft. I think I think of gentleness. I think of gentleness at, uh, in, when we with children are, are but you know as adults we need to be gentle to each other also. You know, when children are little and we take we take very good care of them. We look at them, we we very we don't touch them hard. But gentleness is a, between adults also. We need to be gentle with one another. And we said, Reverend, how we do that? Well, I'm not hitting nobody. But that, that tongue, you need to show generous with your tongue. Because that tongue can be a, a, a mean thing, all right? That, that, that tongue can be used. So gentleness, we need to be gentle with one another. We don't know what people go through or what they've been through when they come to church. Sometimes people come to church and they bust out tears and you don't know why. But something's going on in their life. So we need to be gentle with your folks. Give them a hug or pray for them, you know. We have to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and show that gentleness. We can't talk gentleness. We need to show gentleness. All right. Self-control. This is, this is talking about us. We need to exercise self-control. When we want self-control, it's really, you just let the Holy Spirit have control. You won't have to worry about self-control. Self-control is not lashing out, not abruptly just doing things. Self-control is realizing that you need to take time and pray and let the Holy Spirit work whatever is going on in your life. Self-control is the, like the model, be still, know that I'm God. When things are going in life, self-control is not jumping the gun and trying to do something instead of waiting on the Holy Spirit to tell you how to handle the situation. Too many times we make matters worse because we have no self-control. We pray for our children and say, Lord, take care of them. The next thing we do, we call up some psychiatrist, we call up them, and we talk to people. Are we praying for friends or something that, that we, we want to jump in and, and not wait for the prayer to be answered? You have to have some self-control and let the Holy Spirit work and guide you in that. Too many times we we'll jump the guns, I just said, and get, try to get ahead of the Lord. Self-control will tell you, pray, let the Holy Spirit guide you in whatever the situation is. Have that self-control. Don't, don't jump up. Don't listen to your friends who say, well, you need to do this. Or, you need to do that. Or you should have done this. No, you should just have some self-control and let them know I'm praying and when the Holy Spirit tells me what to do, that's what I'm going to do. But a lot of times, those who tell you what they did, 
as you get a little bit further to the conversation, it didn't work out for them either what they did. So we need to have that self-control. All right. And it says that against such there is no law. All these fruits what we just discussed, there's no law saying that you shouldn't be doing it. This is what it's saying. There's, there's no law. There's no law, law saying that you can't have joy. There's no law saying you can't have love. You can't have peace. There's no, there's, there's no man-made law saying that you're not to have any of that. He says all this is yours to have. There's no law against any of what we just spoke about. This fruit is for you to have through the Holy Spirit. It comes with no charge, and this is also, there's no law saying you can't have these. All right. As I said, we're in an agriculture place, and sometimes you pass these orchards, you look at the trees, you think, well, I can stop my car and get me a fresh nectarine, but before you get over there, there's a sign saying, no trucks passing her. Don't cross the fence. That the fruit looks good and all that, but the law says don't touch the fruit. But what we're saying here, there's no law saying that you can't have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In other words, there's nothing stopping you from this fruit but you yourself. That's the only thing that's going to stop you. Amen? Pastor, any comments, anything? No, okay. you're right on. Okay. Number four, this is very important of all the things we just discussed. The Holy Spirit gives us power to witness to Christ. Gives us power. And it says Acts 1 and 8, many of us have read this. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. In other words, the, the, uh, what we're seeing in Luke wrote the book of Acts, what we're saying here, he's talking to the church in general. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. In other words, before we do anything, before we attempt anything, before we go on any mission for the Lord, Remember the upper room, they, they waited there. They waited there in reply to this. You receive power when the Holy Spirit. If you feel God has called you to do something or you figure there's something you need to do, make sure you pray and let the Holy Spirit guide you because without the Holy Spirit, you may not be able to accomplish the task that's been put before you. But it says, see, God knew that they were not really, they, they just lost Jesus. They, they, they knew he, they had birth and pains, a new church is being born. But he said, you're going to have some power. I'm not going to leave you powerless. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, if you read about Acts in the church, the day the church was birthed, the Holy Spirit came in like a mighty rushing wind. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So in other words, your power is not you. Your power is the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. And if you want, if you want power, you need to make sure the Holy Spirit is within you. Because that's where the power comes from. Amen. It's like, you know, Jesus and the Father, they, they're, the, they're the power plant. But the Holy Spirit is the cord that connects you in to that power. And so you need to have that Holy Spirit so that when it, that when things are coming your way, that you will be able to handle it. And it says it will give you power to be witness to me in Jerusalem. In other words, the Holy Spirit will not make you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will give you power that, you know what, that you could go talk to somebody who used to be like you, talk to somebody you know. They will give you power where you won't, won't be afraid to tell them about what you're doing, about as the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit will give you that power. What is that power? Power over shyness, power over being scared, power over anything that's condemning your witness, anything that stops you from witness. The Holy Spirit will give you power. And once you receive that power, you will not be limited. That's what it says. You'll be witness to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit will give you power to accomplish great things. It won't be limited power. It will be great power. Power to accomplish uh, many, many things. Amen? Amen. All right. 
I believe I'm feeling like one more as we get ready to end our session here. The Holy Spirit is more than this just a feeling than the other spirit. John 4, 1, 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits where they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. That's between John 4 and 1 and 4. And what he's saying, beloved, do not believe every spirit. There are other spirits at work in this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. These people, these movies talking about ghosts and all that. As a kid, I used to say, what kind of spirit is that? We're not talking about that kind of spirit. We're talking about evil spirit. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits where there are of God. Because many false prophets have gone into the world. In other words, there's men out there talking about the Holy Spirit, but yet they're not talking in the sense that what God's definition of the Holy Spirit is. But it says, test the Spirit where there are God. In other words, when somebody comes and says, the Spirit told me to tell you this, or when I did this, the Spirit told me to do this, and you've got a lot of that going on. But you have to test the Spirit by the Spirit. In other words, if God has something for you to do, gives the Holy Spirit uh, uh, power to imply that to you, he's going to make sure that you're receptive to it. If somebody come up to you and say, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you this, but yet you don't seem to be receptive to it, then something's wrong there. Because if it's for you, the Holy Spirit put in you that it's time for you, for you to listen to this person. And so you try the Spirit by the Spirit. Somebody said, well, I told the Reverend R. Austin, the Lord's Spirit told me to tell you this. Uh, and then if I'm here sitting here like thinking, and she's talking, or whoever's talking, and I'm just not paying no attention, now I guess the Spirit ain't told us to tell me because the Spirit will make me receptive to what they have to say to me. Amen? I had a, I had a young uh, church of God in Christ, great honor on my mother, on my wife's side. She lived to be 106 years old, missionary, church of God in Christ. And the pastor required to set up my call. We were visiting her one day. She was almost 100 at the time. And she gave me a minister's book. She said, you're going to need this. That's before I even accepted my call. I still have that book today, so it's too late. She said, I don't want to take a chance to She said, here, you're going to need this. Now, I didn't know anything what she was talking about. But the Spirit led her to do that. And it turned out she was right. So we're talking about Try those spirits. Don't trust every spirit. Try it by the spirit. Pray about it. If you have your doubts, that may be the Holy Spirit telling you that you need to check this out. You need to look into this. If we just blind, there's too many of the pastors, I'm sure, we're right. too many of us blind accepting things in the church. People saying the Holy Spirit said this, the Holy Spirit said that, and just because we 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 don't know any better. We it. But it says right there, there's other spirits in the world, and we need to make sure that we are ready to receive that. That's going to be our lesson for right now. Once again, we thank you for coming out. Those who are here, those who are on our Facebook page, uh, we pray that you're learning something from this. Church will start in 15 minutes, so you still have time to come down. We know it's a national holiday about the birth of a nation, but every Sunday, we, especially this Sunday, we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was before this nation was even thought of. So let's come out today for church, for our Sundays, for our, for our worship experience and communion. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of your Son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this time of studying your word, Father. We thank you for those in the sanctuary. We thank you for those who are present on our Facebook. We pray for all something said and done that will encourage your children, your people, to read your word, Father, study more word. As we study, we get to know you better. We become better Christians. Now, Father, we give blessings on our, our services about to start, Father. We pray, Father, those who are coming out and those who will be on social media. But God, we pray for those who are sick and shut in this fossil. We praise you. We give you honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen.